I had to come back one last time to talk about this. Storm Monroe is an evil, psychotic, I don't even want to say human being because what he demonstrated last week was not human. This is a man that reached 100K subscribers with the help of Jack Wright. I mentioned at a previous video why, why you know what happened. I'm not going to get into it. If you want, you can listen to the other commentary. But Jack Watt chose to give him not only the comment, the, the interview, not once, but twice. But the first one, he reached a million within about, I believe it was three days. Okay. They, they fell out for whatever reason. He feels hurt. It's one thing to feel hurt. You have the right to feel that way. But what you don't do is talk about her. Call her a bitch. Say that you would stick her your penis in her mouth. You threatened her. And you said that you basically don't believe in God. And that you want her dead. And that you basically open it up for this woman to be killed. The stuff that this man said was so hurtful that, I mean, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it at all. I could not believe it. I could, I, I, I was just, mm -mm. this is what I'm going to say about this. I'm going to say this because I think this is very, I think this is fair. I think that Storm Monroe is a closeted gay man. I think he's in the closet. I think that Storm Monroe does not like being gay. I think Storm Monroe wishes that he was straight. He's saying that he's straight because that's what he wants to be. But he's not. It's evident that the man is flaming. Storm is an effeminate name. I've never came across a guy, not even a gay guy, with the name Storm. Storm is not an alpha man. He's a beta. Because a beta, an alpha man would not be up under Tasha K. Let's call it what it is. Another thing, too, is that Storm Monroe had a sinister laugh when he said, I'm not going to take the video down. I'm going to still make money off of it. And you could hear like a demon inside of him. He wants this woman gone from the planet Earth. And he's doing it because I feel that that part isn't solely him, but it's somebody in the industry that wants to take Jaguar out. And Jaguar, given that interview with Storm, is now pretty much, in my opinion, it kind of is opening the doors. That's why in my last commentary, I will say that Jaguar Rice needs to protect herself because she gave her interview with the wrong person. Those people do not have Jesus in their heart. They don't have the Lord in their heart. They don't even have, you know, Yahweh in their heart. They, those two, him and Tasha K, they are the most dirtiest people ever on YouTube. And what they did, they just basically dirtied, in my opinion, they dirtied the YouTube brand. But he said something very powerful. He said, I will be damned if I go back. To being a cruddy social worker and making video, YouTube videos in my car. And I think it's very important. And I'm going to tell you why that was a very important thing. A lot of people don't know this about Storm Monroe. But Storm Monroe joined an all-white fraternity. Storm Monroe didn't really grow up immersed in black culture. This is a money grab. And Armand Wiggins said this. When he was going on a smear campaign and doxing, and doxing Armand for, J for Tasha K, he really didn't know anything about, about black the black world. He didn't know about black media. 
he's learned that from watching other bloggers, including Tasha K, and then probably doing research. But like after he did the Jaguar interview, he did the Roseanne Barr interview. And then he did a Lunell interview. And then he's even doing a Rose McGowan interview. But he's not really, he doesn't really care for us as a people. He joined a white fraternity. He could have easily been a Phi Beta Sigma. Why wouldn't he become, you know, like a alpha? I mean, he's not an alpha man, but why would, I, at least I could see him as Sigma. Why would you join a white fraternity? And look what the white fraternity led you to. It led you to being a cruddy social worker. It was all for a waste. And you had to make it with a black woman. And I bet you deep down inside, you don't even want to be around her. You have more disdain for black women than Armand Wiggins. Armand Wiggins don't dislike black women. Armand Wiggins just calls it, calls it what it is. But you have the disdain. You have the disdain for black women. You have it. And I feel as though your time on YouTube is about to be numbered. Because now people know how you feel. And you basically threatened Tasha K. Tasha K didn't threaten you. Tasha K still was was not saying anything bad about you. It was only those women when she was meeting with them in that group chat that told Jaguar, just let him go. You can't save Stormisha. <laughs> I like that, Stormisha. You can't save him. But more importantly, it's like, what happened to YouTube in the last three years? Because if I can go back to like the middle of 2017, YouTube was a fun place still. Like the only thing that was really going on with YouTube, it was, you know, Trump got elected because of a lot of YouTube um, bloggers. But other than that, everything else was like, you know, copacetic. Like, I miss a lot of YouTubers. A lot of old YouTubers I used to watch, they don't even upload content anymore because they're not making money. And it's not really fun because it's gotten vicious. It was so fun. But it's people like those two that made it really nasty. That made YouTube not a fun place to really be on. And that's why, at the end of the day, I really feel that YouTube needs a cleansing. And we as like viewers, because even though I create comment, I, I upload commentary, I don't really consider myself like a, a real content creator because I don't really do the visuals. But like actual viewers, because I'm on YouTube all the time, I feel that it needs a cleansing. Enough is enough. Like YouTube can't go on like this. It really can't. Like the like there was never a YouTube villain with the exception of PewDiePie, but PewDiePie had his own audience. And most of the black world didn't watch him. You know, we pretty much... PewDiePie, you could ignore. Because PewDiePie wasn't going around, like, stalking people. But this Tasha K. Heffa, she a stalker. And Storm Monroe don't really like Tasha K. like that. He's trying to use her. But remember, I believe she knows your dirty secrets. And I believe one of them is about your sexuality. Because the way you went at that Jaguar, you went at her like a broken man. Like a man in the closet. Because I'm a woman of a certain age. And I could tell you, based on his vibe, that's the energy he was given. He was given that evil, like real evil, sinister, like gay, closeted man. And I'm going to tell you something. Storm Monroe has the ability to hurt somebody. He has the ability to hurt a female. If, if, if Jaguar Wright was in his face at that moment, he would have punched her. He would have punched her. He would have hit her in the head with something and knocked her out. I'm telling you. Even though I believe Jaguar would have got up. But he would have attacked her. So um, that's my commentary. Storm Monroe is evil. I will never view another video of his again. And I think that people. Even though they said a lot of people. He lost a lot of subscribers. I can't tell because the last time I saw his subscriber count. He had like 160. I think maybe 60 nine so it's now 161 i don't know but i think it's going to be a long time from him to go to 200k but i don't see him decimating like tasha but i don't think his is going to grow and with that being said it's your girl i'm off i'm out thank you for listening to my commentary i will talk with y'all soon later